What's up guys? I'm Trevis and this is Upgraded RC. You're watching my Winter Rebuild It All video series. This is our ninth video and in this video we'll be discussing and adjusting the dual servo steering system on the E-Revo 2.0. Okay guys, I'm sure all of you have had something to do with your steering system here in one way or another, whether it's doing the very first thing that everybody's telling you to do before you even run your car, which is adjust the linkage so that your servos stop buzzing and fighting each other. Now that is very important. If your uh, servos are fighting each other and you hear that buzzing going on, number one, uh, your receiver is slowly draining your battery. It's unnecessary. Number two, when your servos are fighting each other like that, the motors are binding against each other. It's not very good at all. So today we're going to adjust it so that there's no buzzing, um, there's no fighting between the servos, there's no battery drain, and we're going to have perfect alignment so that our servo saver is perpendicular to this 90 degree rail on the on the car here and everything's going nice and straight. Now I've done this many times myself just by putting the servo horns at the correct angle and both of them are about the same as close as you can get and then this here being perfectly 90 degrees to the frame like I said and you just adjust your linkage in and out here. Well today I'm going to go ahead and do it exactly the way Traxxas wants to do it. I printed off their sheet um, and we're going to we're going to try it like that and see if it's uh, any easier and how straight that comes out. Now this is the page I was talking about guys. This came directly from Traxxas Online. This is their owner's manual for the E-Revo 2.0. This is page number 28 and we are discussing the dual servo steering system. Now if you read through this series of steps here from Traxxas guys, basically what they're wanting you to do is go ahead and disconnect your steering linkage. You're going to take the 2mm Allen off of the end that has your servo horn on it and the other two millimeter allen off the end that is connected to your servo saver. Now once you have that removed go ahead and take the two millimeter allen out of the center of your servo horn connecting it to the servo. Remove your horn. Once you're done with that go ahead and take your remote control and your car and turn it on and we want to both set the steering trim to zero and also the TSM to zero. That way the Traxxas stability management is not interfering with our steering adjustment. Same thing if you had a different remote. Like I've got a Spectrum DX5C and on mine it's called ABC or Active Vehicle Control. Make sure the steering portion of that is turned to zero or turned off. Now next what we're going to do, let me go ahead and zero in here. What they want you to do after that, oops that's too far isn't it? Let's go right about there. Okay, what they're going to want you to take and do after that is adjust your steering linkage so that from eye to eye you're getting a perfect 31.7 millimeters. And after you get that done, they're going to want you to go ahead and take your servo horns and put them back on. Once you've taken your remote and turned it side to side and it's, it's at center rest right where they both want to be with nothing hooked up to them, then you're going to go ahead and put your servo horns back on and we're going to try to get them as close to 7 degrees as we can. That's what they're wanting over here. Let me see if I can move this for you guys. Right here on the other side of the page. See how they're showing the servo horn and it's at 7 degrees to the frame. So we're going to go ahead and get that as close as we can. Once we get all that done, then we can go ahead and actually adjust the linkage here on the turnbuckle back and forth until we get it exactly perfect. And our servo saver is... 90 degrees or perpendicular to our frame rail and then it'll be perfect steering and there'll be no more buzzing or anything else. So to get going here on this task guys we're going to go ahead and I think it's important to remove the guards for the servos here because otherwise you're going to have a really difficult time trying to get a small square in here to try to see if you're at 7 degrees or not. And it's just going to make everything work out better anyway. So go ahead and take that 2 millimeter Allen off there and there and remove your servo guards on both sides. And then go ahead and take your steering linkage off as well. Okay guys, after you get your steering servo horns off, you can go ahead and turn on your remote. And you're going to find your trim for your steering here. You can see mine's right here at the top, steering trim. I'm four points to the left off. So I'm going to go ahead and take this here back to zero. 
There we go. Now it's perfectly centered on my steering trim. I can check side to side. It ends up on zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to come down here to our AVC, our active vehicle control. Like I said, if yours is stock, you're going to have TSM, Traction Stability Management. I'm going to come down here to where it says my steering here. Steering gain. I've got mine set at 25%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that down to zero. We're going to turn that off so there's nothing on there whatsoever that can screw with my adjustment on my steering. Okay, there we go. We're all good for that. Now we're going to go ahead and turn our car on. Okay guys, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take our servo horn here and we're going to put it back on the servo gear and try to get this adjustment here as close to 7 degrees that Traxxas wants as possible. Now to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use my JC Concepts Track Angle Finder. This works great. I use it to adjust my camber and everything else. But if you can see on the side here, it's got some degree marks. Well, I've set mine for exactly 7 degrees because that's what Traxxas wants. And you can just tighten it down. This thing works great. Now it'll work on both sides. I don't have to change adjustments or try to hold it or look at numbers or anything. So what we're going to do is when we get our servo horn here, as you can see there's, there's three holes in the servo horn. There's two here and one here. So when this is lined up, theoretically, this would make a straight line between all three holes. Now that's lined up exactly perfect. So that's what we're trying to do is get our servo horn on here with this showing the right adjustment. And I'm also going to have to take and use the speed square. It was the easiest way I could find to do this. I can't get anything in the side here where it's square there to do it. So I measured off here to the edges of the battery uh, box compartment here, the door, and it works great. It's exactly the same measurement, so that's as square as that is. So if we put this up here, and we put our angle finder on here, like so, now I can run this up here, and I can put my servo horn back on here. Oh, let's just go where I think it's going to be here. That's probably too much, actually. Now look at that. That adjustment is way off. That's not even close. So I went too high, so we got to take it off. I'm going to come down one notch here. I'm going to see if that works for us. Oh, that's it, guys. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Um, but I've got this hole, this hole, and this hole lining up with this edge of my angle finder, and I've got my speed square tied up against the battery door. And I'm going to say that's as close as I can get. That's probably about... Oh, we're probably about seven and a half degrees there. I don't think we're going to get seven due to the gears on the servo here where the horn mounts. You've only got so many positions you can go, and we're not going to get any closer than that. So that's pretty good. I like that. Let's go ahead and see what we can do to the other side here. If I switch this around like this and put this this way this time, now we can stick our horn on here where we think it's pretty close. It looks like it's closer to the other side there. And we come up, that's, that's quite a bit more. That's probably more like, like eight. I'm gonna try to go down a little bit here. See if we can go to the next notch, what's gonna happen. No, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be way too much. That's almost a 90. Yeah, that's too much, guys. So what I'm gonna do is take this back off and we're going to put it to the very next notch I can, which is right there. And check it again. If you look, that doesn't match up exactly. It's real close, but it's not as close as the other side. This is probably, oh, we're probably about eight instead of that seven and a half on the other side. I don't think we're going to get any closer to it. That's just the nature of the servos and the way the gear and the servo horns go on. So we'll go ahead and go with that. I'm going to put my screws back in here and tighten them down. Uh, snug, don't kill them, it's just plastic you're screwing it into, so you don't want to strip it out. But go ahead and put that down snug, and then we'll uh, adjust our steering links. Alright guys, so I got our steering linkage out here, and what Traxxas wants us to do is measure from this eye to this eye, and have a perfect measurement of that 31.7 millimeters they were talking about. So, to do that, we got our trusty caliper here, and make sure yours is on zero. If not, go ahead and zero it out. And then let's see what I got here right now. You can go ahead and just kind of push your linkage down and let it rest real easy back up. That way your eyes are, 
are centered and they're not kicked off to the side and you're getting the wrong measurement. So by me doing this here, it looks like I am at about 31, 31.43. So I'm just a little bit less than what I need to be. I wanted to show you guys something. The big toolbox behind me that you guys have been staring at while I've been standing here, well this drawer right here, this is my wrench drawer. And I have got just about every wrench known to man for metric and American and some other stuff. I do not have the wrench for this turnbuckle as odd as that may seem. And take a good pair of needle nose pliers. It'll do the same thing, you just gotta really grip that turnbuckle pretty good there. You gotta get it and hold on to it and squeeze the hell out of it so it doesn't move on you. Then you can go ahead and stick your pick in the eye here and go whichever direction you need to until you get to your correct adjustment of 31.7. Now keep in mind guys, as you're turning your links out on your turnbuckle on either side to get your adjustment, try to maintain the same distance between the turnbuckle and the edge of the link on both sides if you possibly can. That way uh, you don't have one really sticking out there and one really in there. It's just going to make it a little bit stronger and a little bit give you a little bit more stability. Now, once you get the measurement that you want, I think I'm pretty close here, guys. I, uh, if we take and put it right there in the center, go ahead and adjust it here. Let's see what we got. And I'm going to say that's pretty close right there to dead nut center. And it looks like I've got 31.71. Uh, well, that's as close as I can get it, and I'm not positive that this thing is exactly accurate. It's probably off just a little bit, but that looks pretty good to me. Now, after you get that done, if you, uh, that is one thing I didn't tell you guys, is see these pillow balls here? If you can take and move them side to side in your link, if there's any play at all, replace your links. Um, if your links are bent, the plastic is warped in any way, go ahead and replace your links. You don't want to go through all this adjustment and have your pillow balls or your links not uh, tight and they have play or they're worn out. If they are worn out and you want to replace them, this is what you're going to use. This is part number 5349 from Traxxas. It's four bucks for six of them. So that gives you enough to do all four and you still got two left over. Okay guys, now that you've got your steering linkage here adjusted to your 31.7 millimeters on each side you can go ahead and hook this linkage up on this side to your servo saver and this side to your servo horn um, and tighten them down now do not connect this side to your servo horn you can connect it to your servo saver just leave the rest of the linkage linkage free from your servo horn that way what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and adjust this turnbuckle here by turning it back and forth with your 732's wrench or your needle nose until your servo saver here looks like it's perfect, a perfect 90 degree or right angle to this part of your frame. Um, the best way I found to do this, guys, was with our speed square again. And then I just took a framer square, a smaller one, and put it up next to it. And while you're holding the frame here, try to look down the edge of the arm and see if you can see that it's uh, perpendicular or parallel to, to this here. And perpendicular to a 90 that's looking pretty good to me um, if you have to adjust it any at all go ahead and adjust it now this right here turn your turnbuckle one way or the other until you get this to where you feel it's a good 90 now once you get that done you can go ahead and let's turn on our car here again guys let's plug this in and turn it on that way we can make sure that our linkage hasn't moved on us any at all while we're hooking this up so I can turn this back and forth side to side here and it's probably important that you check and make sure you're still at a 90 after you do that. You may have bumped it or something. I, I probably could have done that. So we get it back on here. That Boy, that looks really good guys. That's super close to being straight. I don't think I'm going to get any closer than that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stick this linkage back in our servo horn. Now it's off a little bit. I don't know if you guys can tell that. It's not exactly perfect here. So this is the point where you decide if you want to turn your turnbuckle in and out to make it correct or if you want to take your servo horn off and adjust it one way or the other. Whichever way is closest for you is probably the best. 
And remember, you've only got so much adjustment on this turnbuckle here going in, and then you're going to be out of adjustment. Going out, you've got quite a bit, but I wouldn't recommend going out too far with it. Try to get it as close as you can, either here on the turnbuckle or right here on the servo horn. Get that as close as you can so you're still maintaining your uh, 90 degrees to the frame or your perpendicular. So guys, I was able to get mine lined up pretty straight just by turning the link ends on the turnbuckle back and forth. I did not have to remove my steering horn. So once you get that pretty straight, and I've still got my car on, so I can take and go back and forth here to make sure that it's still a center rest where it wants to be. And then put your linkage in the, ser in the servo horn here, and you can look down it and physically see that there's no more of the eye sticking out. It looks like it's perfectly centered. Then you can take your screw and just drop it right in. If that goes right in, there's no problems. If you have to take and pull back on your horn or push your linkage forward to get this to line up, then it's not lined up yet. You need more adjustment. It should just drop right in there all by itself. Then we can go ahead and tighten this up here, guys. Once you get that tight, and go ahead and check again for your play. Now, do you guys hear my servos buzzing? You don't. The only thing I can hear is the sound of the fan on my ESC running. There's no buzzing. There's no hesitation or anything from my servos. They're lined up perfectly. I believe I got my steering servo saver here a uh, perfect 90 to my frame rail. Um, I, I use the speed square, the framer square. I use the flashlight just looking down. It's kind of really by eye, guys. I mean, you can get it as close as you can with the speed square and the framer square. Yes, I agree. But still, it's kind of by eye looking down here with the flashlight at each side. Maybe pulling a measurement off the end of your servo saver here to the end of the frame on both sides. Whatever you want to do to try to get that nice and straight before you adjust this linkage. And then your screw can just drop right down in there with no problems whatsoever. And that's basically it, guys. You can put your guards back on and go ahead and put it back together. I would recommend that you take both ends of your linkage back off the servo horns again. That way, when you're, when you're putting your, your steering rods back in, this end here, you'll be able to get your screws into the servo saver a little bit easier than trying to go in at an angle and stripping them out or cross-threading them. And then go ahead and just tighten it back up, and uh, that's it for this video, guys. Well, that concludes our video on the steering adjustment, guys. Um, you're probably going to want to go ahead and adjust your toe links here for your steering knuckle on the uh, toe in and toe out. I've got a great video on that as well. Um, it's uh, number two in my video series. Or no, I'm sorry, it's number one in my video series. And it's adjusting camber and toe in alignment. You're probably going to want to take a look at that so that you can get everything really straight and lined up. Um, the straighter things are, guys, the smoother they run, the longer they last, the less wear there is. It's just better for everything to run as straight as you possibly can. It's good for your tires, your bearings, everything. All right, guys, I'm out of time. Um, if you guys have any questions about this, please uh, let me know. I will get back with you. It might take me a little while, but I promise I'll get back. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Trevis. This is Upgraded RC. Peace out! Bye.